Hello everyone, I'm Steve. Mark's around. Say hi, Mark. Hey guys, hey, 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 hey! And this is Smokey, Steve, and Mark. Either welcome or welcome back. And happy Saturday. It is the weekend, so we know what that means. Um, uh, Coffee Mate, Bliss, something or other. And um, Pike's Place, Starbucks. Where are the... I think I put some Splenda in there, too. And, of course, an unfinished basement. So we're <laughs> going to continue today where we left off with our fair lady, Chantal. Chantal Marie, foodie beauty, big beautiful me, the daily Chantal, Chantopolis, and foodie beauty again. Now, uh, we were in the beginnings of Vlogtober last week where we left off, um, and it was not... Uh, there wasn't a lot of videos, actually, I, as I recall, to go over. There was a live where she and Pete's kissed in the thumbnail. And uh, if you went through the live or had seen any other reviews or reactions, you know, they were they were bribed uh, via Super Chat to do that, which was very sweet and touching in its own way. Um, they did a spooky drive to get some tacos. So this spooky drive thing, put a pin in that, because I think we're going to see a lot of it this coming week, and then I think in the weeks to come leading up to Halloween for the rest of Vlogtober, or Mucktober, depending on which way the channel goes. And the Pulp Fiction-themed one, where we all remember the crooked wig. Actually, I don't remember the I remember the crooked wig because somebody else brings up crooked wigs. Um, I remember it not being bad. I actually like the Mukbang themed loosely around Pulp Fiction. So, going into this next week, she ate so much that I was full. It was, she just, she ate quite a, a bit. Now, they're all marked Vlogtober, except the last, which is Mucktober. Um, she did weigh in on some thoughts people had about her choices on the community board. Just one post that I could find, which was then edited, because she can never leave well enough alone. And uh, we'll just, we'll go from there. So where we left off, it was Vlogtober Day 3, Fall Decor and Mukbang. And Pete's will be joining us, apparently, for this. Uh... So she shows up at the beginning with her old top. It's this black one I've liked for a thousand years because she's worn it a thousand times. And it is looks good on her. She must have got it at BB's when she went back for some stuff. Uh, she shows off some home decor, some leaves in the backyard, um, some pumpkins. You know, I thought the best costume for the two of them actually would be Tracy Turnblatt and Link Larkin from uh, Hairspray. Just a thought. Just putting it out there. I don't know if you guys watch. If you do on the low, low, it's it's whatever. Think about it. I know it's not as gory, but whatever. So they order in um, Middle Eastern, Turkish food. Pete's gets lamb chops. Go Pete. I would not think Pete's is a lamb chops. Great. It's red meat, I guess. But And as far as the chew factor with this being a mukbang, the lamb chops, I wonder if he got them like well done. Because they were, he was, he was struggling there. And he was wanting a plate and, you know. So then it was just Halloween chit-chat. Her cat's not allowed on the porch because he tried to get away. And uh, Pete played with the cat because he was done halfway through the video while she continued to eat. Next, Vlogtober Day 4. Little Caesars Deep Dish Pizza and Ultimate Fall Mukbang. So she's having this for the first time, the Little Caesars Deep Dish. And she's having it with grape soda. It's a matter of preference. Um, and she's in her pajamas in front of a green screen. So this is you know, fall. And then it was like a tagged Q&A. Like, what was your... This was a couple of the questions that she was just going back and forth with. What'd you dress as for Halloween last year? Her first... First question, her first answer, I don't remember. Way to... Way to... Way to real... <laughs> way to bring us into the discussion. <laughs> don't ask me. I don't remember either. But I wouldn't put... I wouldn't let someone ask me if I didn't know the answer. Favorite fall food, soups and stews, I'm inclined to agree. Thanksgiving dinner, because it's earlier in Canada, um, so it's part of, like, the fall thing. It's not as... Theirs is in October. It's not in November, from what I understand. Hers is coming up, but with uh, COVID restrictions, it might just be her and Pete's, because they're not allowed, or it's not advised strongly, I'm not sure how they word it there, uh, to mix gatherings together. So, by the time it got down to gloves or mittens, I was about done. But then it, there was a timestamp at the 20 minute mark in the comment section, at which point she farted right before the end of the video. So that was oh, that was that. Now, Vlogtober Day 5, Torrid Ball Halloween Plus Size Try-On. So she got some uh, kind of gothic, kind of print tees. 
Um, I wouldn't say these are Halloween clothes, but I would say they're they're seasonal for your, you know, kind of goth light 80s hipster. I understand that a person, I've said this a thousand times, and it bears repeating that, a, you know, if you're a person of size, whether you're extremely tall or extremely round, I suppose, it's hard to find clothes, first of all, that fit, second of all, that you like. So I can appreciate, you know, the position she's in. Uh, she was getting a size jeans that were 26, and I was very apprehensive when she... First of all, I don't think she was a 26. Um, maybe under the stomach, I don't know. But at any rate, she was talking about the style and the cut of these jeans, and I thought, I'm really anticipating a lot, because the only style I've ever seen of jeans on any very large woman is too fucking tight. That's the size of the jeans. But these actually didn't look bad. They actually seemed to fit her where they should and didn't where they didn't. And they kind of, I will give to Chantal, um, she, it, it lifted her, her rear a little higher. Just noticing, just casual observation, one human being looking at another. And it wasn't a bad thing, I saw. Because um, the stretch pants didn't do the same thing. Leggings, no leggings, didn't do the same thing. Uh, she's got a couple print tees, Bowie, The Craft, pretty cool. I thought I was probably in The Craft when I was in high school. I suspect Chantal might have felt the same way. Um, she didn't mention any prices because she said they were having a sale. So, she got a cardigan also, which looked, it was like flesh tone, beigey, I guess. Kind of looked okay. I'm not really a clothes guy, like I said. I haven't bought a new piece of clothing in a very long time. Because of that, people tend to give me clothes for birthdays and Christmases, which I guess is a kind way of saying we hate the way you dress. But, uh, you know, it's that's how I tend to accumulate them. That and uh, half day or half off day at uh, Goodwill or Salvation Army. Those are always good days as well. Uh, she did get this Lacey Rose top in gray that she got in a 5X, which is supposed to come, I think it comes down to her knees. So, and then she ordered a coat or a jacket, because the jean jacket, while sporty and stylish, is not particularly warm. So then the try-on. She said she's glad the pants are stretchy, she means the jeans. Um, like I said, flattering, okay? And there was a cute little thing happening in the lower knee, so I was presumptuous, and I was wrong. They don't look that bad. All things being relative. Okay, she's not a size 2. She's not even a 10. Or twice a 10. Um, but given her body shape and type and what's available and, 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 she looked good. In the pants. Now, the Bowie t-shirt was less forgiving. Much less forgiving. Uh, the craft shirt I thought looked okay. The cardigan I thought looked good. The jean jacket <laughs> creates a dimple in her back. Here's how I know about this. One of my best girlfriends growing up. Um, and I say growing up, I mean like college into my 20s because I didn't grow up much earlier before that. Uh, she was plus size. <clears throat> she was probably 5'8", and she was like a 20 or a 22. And just having flashbacks of that, she would tell me how to like, she would try to create a waist because she was heavier around the middle, but you would never know. I don't know what she did with it. I think control top pantyhose underneath a pair of jeans was a trick. Uh, but then lining up clothing in other directions to create a dimple in the back so the butt pops out and it kind of masks the front a little bit. It's all smoke and mirrors. I mean, I do the same thing. I have loose skin from when I lost weight. It is all smoke and mirrors. He's stunned what's under this. So, at any rate, she tries on all the clothes. They don't look bad. They really don't look bad. So, fall. Vlogtober. Are these fall clothes? Does that make it Vlogtober? Does Vlogtober have to do anything with October and fall? Well, her promise, promises, suggestions, what she put out there initially, if I recall, was video every day. Cool. Um, Fall-y type stuff in the beginning of the month, and then more Halloween-y stuff towards the end. Which is cool. I like that idea. Because fall has a different vibe than Halloween. I mean, they overlap, but... So, we shall see. Next, Vlogtober Day 6. Harvey's and Spooky Drive. Um, so, what makes it fall-ish? Well, I guess the spooky part of the drive is supposed to make it fall. Um, so, she's having an Angus burger, chicken bacon ranch poutine, 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 we're not doing this again, okay? 
Um, Pete's is home alone eating leftovers tonight while she is out. And she was talking about what kind of burger to get, because you crave different burgers from different places at different times. This is true. It is not a conflict that keeps me up, but uh, sometimes you do want a different burger from different places. When I think of a really good burger, I just don't think McDonald's or Burger King. I'm not being a snob. I love McDonald's and Burger King. But I don't think of McDonald's for a burger any more than I think of Domino's for pizza. Like, they're good for what they are, but they're not the real thing. I don't know. So... Uh, let's see. So, she's eating in a parking lot, you know, and I, I zoom in because this is a live we're doing now, so there's no preparation other than the GPS and deciding where to go eat, you know, maybe mapping it out, uh, at least for this film this day. She could have filmed three videos this day, I'm not saying she's doing nothing, I'm just saying for this particular video, she mounted the camera, she flipped it back and forth and talked, went for, got some fast food, and then went for a drive. So, she was going to go to a place that had done some aviation, UFO research type thing. It sounded kind of cool, but she was contingent on her GPS working on her other phone because she had, obviously, her other, she was filming with. So, she finishes her food, wants to go for dessert, ends up with a cappuccino. The GPS isn't working, so they just go for a drive down the parkway, which is kind of spooky. So now, this is a, this is a mukbang pretty much. A mukbang live and dine. She's done this same video titled A Few Different Things. Now, does the fact that she was eating in the car during the season of fall give it the Vlogtober theme that she wanted of, well, it's fall. It was a dark, spooky drive. A lot of dark places are spooky. Can we put elements in here and there to change the whole topic of a video? For example, if I were to take this delicious piece of pumpkin cheesecake, which we made in yesterday's video, I'll put a, a card up here, and take one giant bite of it with a giant wooden spoon. Eat a bite. Does that make this a mukbang? No. I took one bite of a piece of food. That's it. So just because something happens to be in the periphery somewhere within the video, making it the whole thing is kind of like a little misleading. So, I digress. Oh, and she's, she misses her cats. She's been <laughs> away from home for an hour. God bless her. I know. I do. I miss them when I go for overnights. Like, if I have to leave town for work. Vlogtober Day 7, Taco Bell mukbang and Elsa the Haunted Doll. Now she's home, and it's the mountain of tacos. And to be fair, when you order for a lot of folks at Taco Bell, it's the same thing. You know, one taco from Taco Bell isn't particularly filling to me. Um, there were some burritos and chalupas mixed in with that pile she had, though, and then enough sauces to drown a horse. She was talking about haunted dolls. So she mentioned her sister, who had a Barney doll when she was a kid, that she thought made noise when it was no batteries in it, or um, started talking on its own. And uh, that led into a story that Chantal was kind of looking up while she was saying, she had read the story, she knew it, but she was referencing it on her phone quite a bit. Am I mad? I got a freaking notebook. No. Uh, but she was telling it about Elsa, the doll from, you know, the character from Frozen, and some parents that got a doll for their kid, and then it didn't need the battery changed for six years, and they tried to bury it in the Dead Sea. Like, there was a whole big storm and drag to the story. So, uh, she cut in a couple places. Quote, daily videos does not mean daily makeup. Um, and again, the family was trying to get rid of the Elsa doll, and they could not, and it was trashed, they tried to ship it, nothing. They couldn't get rid of it. And after 11 minutes, that story was over. So then she started talking about just more random stuff. Uh, Thanksgiving, she said, essentially canceled in Canada, as far as they're concerned. Um, they're going to celebrate possibly on their own, uh, her and Pete's. She doesn't want to make a whole turkey, maybe a small turkey or just a turkey breast, stuff like that. We don't know. I was just talking to mom today about Thanksgiving plans. We'll see. I have small nieces and nephews among my siblings, so kids are germ factories. <laughs> and, and in light of a pandemic, uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So she said at the end of all these tacos, she is still not full. I guess if you're not full, you're not full. I mean, she's a large woman who binge eats day often. 
you know, according to her. If these aren't binges, and when she binges, it's twice this, then she can eat a lot in one sitting. So, Vlogtober Day 8, Fall Rhapsody and Barbecued Chicken. So again, we're out for a drive. Rural Canada, which I do like when she goes for a drive through rural Canada. She's going to see the outdoors Gatineau Park, uh, go for a drive, look at the foliage, take in the sun, you know, all of that stuff. Breathe it in, you know, let the juices run down, that kind of thing. Uh, and again, she reiterates Halloween content later in the month, fall content for now. So I'm liking, she put some like audio inserts here and there. She did a quick close up in a black and white. That's stuff I haven't seen Chantal do before. I like it. She just, I, I thought it was cute. It caught my attention, because usually when she's talking, I'm writing notes, sucking my teeth, cigarette hanging out of my mouth, and I'm just kind of going like this. And if something catches my ear, I'll look up. Because when she's doing a mukbang, there's nothing I need to see. <laughs> if there's a long silence, I'll look up. But when she paces her stories while she's eating, a sentence can take 45 seconds because she chews a lot in between bites to, you know... For, the, for those enjoying the chewing experience, and also to probably stretch the video out, too, I would think. So, go, at any rate. So, she goes for a pumpkin spice latte first. She said it was probably her first pumpkin spice thing of the season. This uh, delicious cheesecake is close to mine. I usually only have one or two pumpkin spice things for the season. But this year it seems to be more, for reasons unclear. Let's see. Fall drive, eight, nine minutes. Then we're having barbecued chicken, and she's not so hungry. Not so hungry. Then grabs the chicken by the drumsticks and pulls it forward. <laughs> now, she did not eat half the chicken, even though she said afterwards she actually thought she might. Um, and she hadn't gotten food from this place until, or uh, since she had been, I guess, living with BB. It had been a while. Looked good. I mean, it looked like roasted barbecue, char-grilled chicken, and rice. It looked like something tasty, and she was scraping stuff off so Pete's might try it. God, I love him. He's like a, I don't know, it's like having a child, it seems like. So, Mucktober. Mucktober, day nine. Creamy pumpkin Alfredo giant cheese sausage mukbang. And this was a green screen fail. She sat in front of a green screen. And it wasn't, it was green. Just green. So, Things happen. I've had shit fall in the background. Um, I've, my glasses have been crooked the whole time. I've done whole videos where it was nothing but glare. Nothing. I mean, this is a, a little rough for me. She did do that one one time, though, where the audio was bad, and she re-narrated over herself with the lips moving the whole time. I've done that for, like, little bits of a video, but I don't know about a whole thing. But, at any rate. So... Here's, here's something, something, just an insight into the relationship between Pete's and Chantal that I had noticed. So she has gone shopping prior to this because she cooked. She made creamy pumpkin Alfredo and she made it from scratch. And it looked so good. So good. However, she said she came home from the grocery store and went right in to start cooking. So she prepared this meal however long it took. Alfredo could come together with fresh pasta. Not too, too long. Pete's is coming in and out of the background as she begins filming and eating and everything. And he asked something about cat food. Did she get any? She said, oh no, I'll have to go to the store tomorrow. And he was coming in and out of the car with groceries. And she had said, I'll have to go back when we get your stuff. So he's unloading the groceries for the trip that she did. And they've been sitting in that car because she, she went to the store, bought food, came in, started cooking, and now Pete's is going back and unloading. And it's not his stuff, it's her stuff. They'll go back for his stuff. So, just the, the dynamic of the relationship, of, of the division of duties. And I don't, there's nothing gendered in my head about women pick up groceries, men do this, women do that. It's just, you know, who, who can do it? Um... But it was, it was just curious, just, you know, just another little insight into, oh, this is how they interact. Not good, bad, or indifferent, but just this is how this relationship works. So, uh, so yeah, Pete's is a pack mule for carrying all her crap. If he breaks a leg, I hope she doesn't shoot him. 
Uh, she did say, just plain out, Pete's does more of the physical stuff and that she does the cooking and the cleaning. Now, if you look over this last week, I'm sure she must have cooked, maybe for him, but this was the first thing she's cooked since last week that made it to YouTube. Everything else was takeout, pretty much. Um, so, you know, I, I, unless Pete's been eating leftovers since last week. I imagine she's at least made him some toast or a coffee or something he likes, because he doesn't like half the food she eats anyway. So... Let's see. So her story time for this, because there was a story time for this Mucktober, which is, I guess, the way we're going now. Uh, I wanted to be a professor, but changed my mind, got a job, and dropped out of college. So this was like 2004, and then she moved into a place with a absentee roommate who was hit or miss seeing their boyfriend. Chantal worked the night shift. She was dead-ass broke, lived on soy sauce and rice. It sounds like more soy sauce than rice. It was rice and soy sauce. And she'd feel a presence in the place when she was staying there alone. Doors opening, doors closing. Um, TV would be on when she would get home in the morning, and the roommate was a stickler for lights out, so it must have could have meant something was going on. Um, and then that was that was blah blah blah. So I wasn't the only person. That was the last video. It's far unless she's putting something up right now. So as to the community board, which is sometimes hopping, but it wasn't really too much this week. There was only one thing put, well, two things put up. Um, concern about her colonoscopy, which, you know, she's supposed to have coming up at some point in the near future, which she's a little bit nervous about. Uh, the prep sucks. You'll live. They make you quite comfortable during the colonoscopy. You might be enjoying it a little bit after, too. So she made a post and then edited it. So here we are. This was a few days ago. So this was after the first few mukbangs had already hit the scene. So I totally get that people are going to criticize my content. However, I see a lot of channels who don't even have their own content complaining about how boring my Vlogtober is or how it is mukbangs. Duh, I said months ago I was going to do mukbangs on my channel. Does anyone else find it weird for creators to criticize my content, yet their only content is reacting to my supposed boring content? I'll give her a day of my week. I'll give her a day of my week. But I can't give her all, all of my content. Um, also, newsflash, if my content is so boring and lame, by all means, feel free to utilize your free will and change the channel. That's the genius of it. To try to take something that wouldn't be accessible to most audiences, that has its own little niche, try to break it down and see if you can make it palatable for others. And then the other half of it is just probably gossip. So... Does anyone else find it weird, da, 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 if my content's so boring? Don't like my videos? Who cares? Yeah, you. You care. I'm not, I'm not commenting to get a rise out of you or to, or to incite you to change. I'm just sharing some observations, and I relate to some of the stuff that goes on on the channel and other stuff, thank God I don't. So, for those who are enjoying, thank you thus far. There are still three weeks to go, and I have a lot more planned. Thank you for being patient with me and not negative. And hey, if you think you can do better than that, by all means, do your own Vlogtober. It's already Mucktober. It's already Mucktober. So, edit, and yes, you can still- edit! Okay, just to clarify, you can still call it Vlogtober even if there are mukbangs. It's still a video log, a food-related one. And since there will be vlogs and a mix of content this month, Vlogtober is a fine name for the occasion. My videos have been mostly mukbangs for months now, so people should know that there are going to be mukbangs as part of my Vlogtober experience. In any theme. Any theme. On any diet. On any weight loss journey. On any healthy thing. There will always be a reason. And this is just a given fact. This is just a fact of Chantal's channel. Again, not good, bad, or indifferent. She creates the content, she decides on the content. There will always be a spin on the ball that brings it back to eating on camera. There just always is. Whether it's because it's October, whether it's because she's starting a new healthy eating plan and wants to show off her healthy meals and ask for accountability, um, whether it's it's my party and I'll eat if I want to, the, the you don't own me kind of thing, uh, whether it's for spite, whether it's to celebrate, whether it's for any reason, to show haters. There will always be a reason that she needs to eat on camera. The interesting part is how it gets brought back in and how it gets justified. Um, so that that's a piece of it, because I'm an old addict, so I, I get reaching for 
<laughs> grasping at straws. I'm like, oh, I, the mail was late today. I just, I need a drink. So I, I can appreciate that, that small portion of it. As far as it being boring, well, it's repetitive. Um, it's, it's a lot of the same stuff over and over again. Uh, her channel is growing a little bit, and I like to see that some of the things are a little different. I prefer, like, you know, the try-ons and myself, personally. And when she cooks, as opposed to just going through a takeout and smashing down food in her car. But, we'll see. I'm here for it. I'm waiting for the spooky stuff to get started. I'm waiting for the spooky stuff on our channel. I'm waiting for the spooky stuff on hers. So we shall see. So thank you all for watching. Please do subscribe. Hit the like button and the bell on your way out so you get the alerts. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smokey Steve Space and Mark or on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark. Our email address and our contact information is all listed down below as well. Thank you again. And Mark and I are going live tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Eastern. So if you're free, feel free to stop by and say howdy. We have no topic. We get off on a thousand topics. It's usually pretty chill, though. It's like the cool side of the pillow. Feel free to stop by. Thanks for watching. Bye.